to the uh, Cambium Open House 2017 was Palooza. Appreciate everybody being here. This is a record number of attendees, record number of uh, registered uh, attendees for the for the Open House of that. So we're, we couldn't be any happier to have you guys here. Uh, I, I'm Derek Underwood. For those of you who, uh, who I have not met, then I uh, run the North America Sales and Build Engineering Organization. And I'd like for uh, all the Cambium folks in the room to, to raise your hands. Um, and, and I think it's, it's really impressive that we bring such a big group to this event. This is a, this is a very key, uh, the most important piece of business in, in North America for us is sitting here in this room. So we greatly appreciate all of you guys and all the support that you guys give us and all the good feedback that we get and how much of a commitment you've made to us. And we also make that commitment back to the wireless service provider community. So I think it's an exciting time to be a wireless internet service provider. Uh, I think you're going to hear not just new technologies, but new frequencies. Um, there's so much opportunity out there. We've got some pretty big players entering the space, really continuing to, to legitimize the industry. Uh, and I think it's going to help all of us in the room when it comes to, to frequency allocation and giving us more spectrum to, to operate in. So we're going to talk a little bit today, a couple of things. We're going to, uh, our CEO is going to come up. I'm going to bring him up in just a second. And he's going to talk about some of the things that are important to Cameo, our core values, all the, the, the things that we do on a daily basis to provide high quality, affordable quality products and support our customers. Uh, and then Scott Imhoff is going to come up and present uh, quite a bit on the, on the Cameo roadmap. We're going to open up uh, a lot of, uh, of roadmap items that uh, we probably haven't done in the past. I think it's important for us to do that because it really gives you guys some visibility in, into the longer term planning uh, so you guys can figure out exactly how, how you're going to build out these networks moving forward. So a couple of housekeeping items. We have uh, two raffles this evening. Uh, we're raffling uh, some CM pilot equipment and also a thousand dollar purchase credit. You have to be present to win. Uh, and the raffle is going to take place at uh, between 8 and 8.30. So again, after this event, we will open these doors up. We'll funnel next door where we've got product demonstration. We've got some, a lot of our development engineers look forward to coming into this event. They get to talk to you guys firsthand and understand some of the challenges that you face in the field. And, and a lot of the feedback we get from events like this go into, into the product roadmap. So it's a great opportunity for you to spend some time with folks that are, that are typically pretty difficult to get access to. Um, we also have, as I mentioned, we've got cocktails uh, next door, uh, demos, and, and we'll also have some food as well. So we'll, we'll hold uh, questions till the end, if we could, and we'll, we'll get those uh, questions answered. We'll leave some time for, for Q&A for myself, Atul, and, and Scott at the end of the presentation. So with that, I'd like to bring up uh, our CEO, Tool Bob Nagar. Thanks. Thanks, Doug. Uh, Derek is an example of Cambium core values. Five years back, Derek was a you know, sales manager in Cambium. In five years, through his work, through his passions, through his uh, diligence, customer focus, Derek rose from sales manager to Director of Sales, now he's Vice President. So I want to give Derek a round of applause for all the passion and things. You guys relax now. Uh, we are going to have a nice long evening. So just relax. And my goal today is actually to focus on two words. Everything I say, everything I do, will focus on innovation and goodness. Whenever I come to Vispa, and particularly, I've been coming now five years, I've been with Cambium five years. It feels like a family. It doesn't feel like a business or, you know, partner or channel or customers. It feels like a family. And I cannot say that for 39 years in networking, I've been working. 39 years back. I started my career in, uh, in Tektronics in Oregon. We worked in Oregon, the oscilloscope company, for some of you. And I implemented TCP IP and Ethernet driver for BSD Unix. We implemented one megabit Ethernet. And we thought, you don't need any more speed. 
<laughs> because I came from R two thirty two, X twenty five. Some of you now may not remember these things, but so when one megabit Ethernet came, I said, "This is it. This is the holy grail." Yeah. When I ran Ixia about seven years back as a as Ixia CEO, we implemented world's first hundred gigabit Ethernet. Let me let me compare. So in about thirty years, we went from one megabit Ethernet to a hundred gigabit Ethernet in thirty years. That's a revolution. Ten to power five or ten to power six, and hundred gigabit Ethernet, you process fifteen eighteen bytes in about four nanoseconds. There's a powerful FPGA on the on, on the on the processor on, on the blade, and you process that on the fly because when you're generating traffic. You are generating everything on the fly. But the best job of my 39 years, I spent 15 years in Hewlett Packard doing networks, you know, three years in electronics, six years in Northern Networks doing career switching and all sorts of stuff, five years in Ixia, traffic generation simulation, and now five years in Cambium. Cambium is the best job, and I'll explain why. I will also explain why all of you actually have the best job. Because in those 39 years, while we did routers, switches, all sorts of stuff, firewalls, VPNs, we never felt goodness. Never felt goodness because we never touched people. We never brought the, you know, the connectivity to people. So all of you actually have the best job. Because you bring so much goodness to people, and sometimes you don't realize that, because you are connecting the unconnected, you are eliminating the digital divide, you are educating people, you are generating job opportunities, and all of you are entrepreneurs. That's another very fascinating thing in this room, because all of you are entrepreneurs, and that binds us together. So, if there are two words that binds us together, and I think you'll see plenty of proof this evening, if if one thing binds us together, binds us together, that is innovation and goodness. And I feel very good as you know when you cross you know, 50, 55, you start to get liberated. You start to feel you know you take stock of what you've done in your life, and you have no axe to grind. And that's when, when you look back and say, you know what, the kind of things we do together is bringing a lot of goodness in our community. We bind communities, we hold communities, we connect communities. So I want to congratulate all of you in this room, in your own capacity, small or big, you are bringing goodness. And that is Cambium's core mantra. Innovate to bring goodness. And that's the theme this evening. Uh, let me focus on more our vision strategy, but I'll keep coming back to these two words Innovation and goodness Now how can you has evolved? Uh, you know, I did one course once and they say if you, can, if you can explain your company's story in three words Then you know your company story Our company story in three words Is survive strive thrive and that very accurately describes Cambium Network. And as you go through, you will see how those three words really come together. Survive, strive, and thrive. Cambium has evolved into a wireless fabric company. And what I mean by the wireless fabric, what is a fabric? Fabric is a, a you know, it's a, it's a object, large or small, which has multiple strands. And the strands make the fabric stronger. And you weave the strands and that becomes fabric. Cambrian, Cambium has become a wireless fabric company because over the last five, six years, we have taken many strands, TDD, FTD, Wi-Fi, LTE now. All these technologies and made them a fabric. These strands have become strong strands and, and we use the fabric to let you build a purpose-built network. Each network is unique. 
No two networks are similar. Those of you networking now, no two networks are similar. So we have built this purpose-built network using that fabric. The fabric is resilient, that means high quality and affordable. When we came out of Motorola, that was one change we made. We knew Motorola gave us a very good DNA. We knew Motorola gave us a fantastic quality in RF, antenna technology, how to design great products. But we had to improve affordability. And throughout this evening, you'll see how we are improving affordability with innovation. So Cadmium is now a wireless fabric company. And the wireless fabric can go from 2 meters to 245 kilometers. Totally wireless, no digging any trench, and all manageable with a single fabric based in cloud, single management system based in cloud. Now these networks are very different, whether it's oil and gas, whether it's a typical water and waste management, whether it's energy grid, or whether it's typical broadband at home. They are different networks, but they all require resilience, and they all require affordability, especially the kind of customers we serve. And they are all managed from a single pane of glass called CN Maestro. CN Maestro is totally cloud-based. When we were conceiving CN Maestro about three and a half years back, we focused on scalability. And this is another theme I'll talk about. In the next five years, the amount of scalability we will face because of in the IoT, uh, because of you know just proliferation of broadband across the board, the scalability will become a very big differentiator in networks. So we designed the CN Maestro in such a way we can scale as the networks grow pretty rapidly. So wireless fabric driving the purpose-built network, as the 5G comes along, the speeds and feeds are increasing. The smart cities, industrial IoT, all these key applications will require emerging technologies in that fabric. Many of you are using CN Medusa, which is industry's first 14 by 14 massive MU MIMO platform. And we are going to demo that as well next door when, when presentations are done. And that innovation is only one of the first innovations in 5G-like technologies in terms of massive MIMO. We are very layered to agnostic. Cambium will keep adopting new technologies. We are not religious about any technology. We are very religious about solutions. We are very religious, religious about giving you quality. We are very religious about making sure they are affordable. Those are the driving factors in Cambium. So you will see us adopt continuously new technologies. And that, that is the part of that strength in the fabric I am describing. From kilobit in industrial IoT, to megabit to gigabit from indoor and outdoor. Let me, let me share with you a little bit about outdoor. As I said, goodness is a very key driving factor for Canyon. So this summer, we work with a company in Nepal and we put together a 200 megabit link from Everest base camp to the valley, point to point. And then we put outdoor Wi-Fi on Everest base camp. This summer, every Everest climber used WhatsApp, voice over IP, using Cambium system. And a lot of those local people who live in that uh, village right there, you know, they don't have medical facilities. So that was a Cambium project this summer. And throughout my presentation, I'll show you how we have that innovation and goodness across the world. And the, the point I was making is on an Everest base camp, the temperatures drop substantially. The, the entire system sits on a glacier. That's the kind of quality Cambium is building. Easy, easy to plug in, uh, plug and play. Cambium uh, Maestro providing that uh, management system for the fabric. Our journey, as I said, survive, strive, thrive. When we came out of Motorola, we were in survival mode. Many of you, I remember talking well, and you gave me a lot of feedback. Some good, some not so good. But even the one which was not so good helped us in introspecting, in making sure we have a strong plan moving forward. And as a result, we in last five years have gone from the survival mode when we came out of Motorola 
to striving for products and then finally having innovative products and going to thriving zone. So the key points I want to make is that our core values as a company is the key differentiator. Because what we do, we do in a very kosher manner. Customers are very important for us. 24 by 7 support is very important for us. And we all know you are entrepreneurs, all of you. And entrepreneurs need efficiency. So for us, working with you is very much key part of our core values. Uh, innovating relentlessly. I think you will, one thing you'll see from Cambium throughout this evening and after me will be Scott Imhoff, our uh, Senior Vice President of Products. And Scott will share with you the roadmap next 12 to 18 months. And you'll see how the relentless innovation is going, how our hundreds of engineers are focusing on your needs. And it's not that we do everything perfect. We commit mistakes. But in Cambium's case, we will never be out of it. We will acknowledge mistake. We will work carefully. We'll come and fix it. And that's the core value of the company. And promote doers. Uh, the reason I shared with you uh, Derek's example, in last 18 months, we have promoted within the company tens of leaders into vice presidency, senior vice presidency, because we believe these are the people who really work with us who made things happen, and Cambium is not about one person. Cambium is about the entire team. Cambium is about those hundreds of people worldwide who do great products, and they are our doers, and they are the ones we are promoting. Velocity and trust. I think those are our, again, very key core values. Any of you, if there's any, ever any problem with Cambium here, we will not never have excuses. We'll look at it, we will find the root cause, we will fix it. And that's our key core value, customer delight. So uh, I again want to thank everyone for helping us go from that survive to strive to now thrive. And thrive we will do together. As we do well, we want to make sure every partner, every customer of Campion does equally well. And we want to be a very strong partner with you in your journey. A little bit about our credentials, what have we done last few years? We have shipped 7 million radios worldwide, about $2 billion worth of cumulative revenue. These 7 billion, there is no place on earth you can go. There's no country, no city you can go where you will not see a canopy or 450 or 450i or 650 or our Wi-Fi products now. Very high quality, working for years after years on top. About 550 employees, we have doubled the Cambium employee headcount in the last three years. And as you can see, those employees now in 140 countries provide 24 by 7 support. So with Cambium, it's not a website, it's not a, you have people who receive your call, give you 24 by 7 support. Very key differentiator. And we are going to keep it that way. We're investing in that area. We're bringing a lot of new tools as well. 10,000 plus customers worldwide. And most 10,000 customers uh, worldwide are being served by about 95% uh, sales through channels. We, channel is a very key part of Cambium because that's how we scale the company. As I said, 2 meters to 245 kilometers, 65% uh, of Cambium sales every quarter comes from products introduced in the last three years. When I worked for Hewlett Packard, Dave Packard, used to always put one slide at the end of the quarter called vintage chart. He always used to measure, are we living on our past laurels? Or are we reinventing ourselves? Because in high tech, one thing is for sure, that if you stay still, you are not innovating, you will not be around. When I was coming out of graduate school, there was a company, we all loved and no, we would have killed to get to, to work in that company <coughs> called Digital Equipment Corporation. Five years, and I did my graduate school early 80s, in about seven or eight years, I think, that company was gone or in serious trouble. Only for two reasons. One, they didn't adopt Unix. Second, they completely ignored PC movement. That's it. Those are the two reasons. 
So those of us who have been in high tech for decades, one thing we know, arrogance kills a company completely. Completely. So in Cambium, we work very hard to make sure none of our executives, no one in the company ever becomes arrogant. Because I've seen too many companies who thought they walk on water only to find that that is impossible. So in our case, that chart or that line, 65% of the sales through that innovation in the last three years is our job security. So every three years, you will see Cambium reinvent itself. Because that's the only thing I know how to do well, how to serve your customers, and how to thrive as a company. We are now at a point where we are posting 20% plus year over year revenue growth. Again, thanks, for, thanks to all of your efforts. Without your loyalty, your support, Cambium wouldn't have done that. We know that. So I want to give everyone who uh, is a Cambium partner, customer, a big round of applause. started Cambium, uh, this journey about five years back, you know, I went to the board and I said, if you want this company to do well long term, we have to invest in products, we have to invest in the future. And we spent 20% of revenue early on, on R&D. Even now, as our revenues are climbing, we are still spending 16% of every dollar we earn, every dollar we bring in, back into the research and development. And you see the proof when Scott comes here and talks about the roadmap. And as a result, we are, we are very well positioned financially as a company. And we are very well positioned to just keep growing for quite a few years. The need we are serving is massive. If you think that you understand this revolution we are now catering to, we don't. The revolution we are about to see is the biggest in our life. Absolutely the biggest. Whether it's people you're connecting, whether it's places you're connecting, whether it's things. It's the things which is going to be the biggest. And if you were to ask me, what is, what's, what's happening? What's the change? The change is that the life and everything around life itself is getting digitized. And that's a pretty profound statement. Life and everything around life is getting digitized. That's what's happening. Everything will be measured, whether we like it or not. And that means digitization, that means sensors, that means artificial intelligence, that means back-end system, that means wireless communications, because wireless is going to be the glue which will hold it together. So we are all very blessed in a lot of ways that we are in an amazing field together. <clears throat> We are totally wireless. So this is why a lot of industries may talk about, you know, my future is bleak or my I don't see the business. Our industry will keep growing. Now technologies may change. It may become a little different solution. Uh, pricing might change. But the industry we are in is in for a long-term growth because of those reasons. Now, as we think about Cambium Networks and as you think about what kind of value we create, number one, affordability is very important for Cambium. Because that's where, in some ways, Motorola had failed. Motorola always gave us good key engine quality, always. And we have not changed that. We have kept that. Same engineers. But we have innovated for affordability through innovation, not by being cheap products, low quality products, but by being innovative products which bring affordability. Secondly, quality will always permeate, again, not that we are perfect, but we'll always strive very hard for excellent quality in everything we do. The way we deal with you, the way we support you, the way we work with you, you'll always see Cambium striving hard for quality. Very superior 24 by 7 support. And that's where anywhere you feel we fail or we don't live up to that, any one of us, please reach out to us. Perform very strongly in noisy conditions. Because we know many of you serve territories which will continue to be very noisy. Cloud-based, very scalable management system. Because we know if I predict 1 million devices, 
it will be 10. If I predict 10 million, it will be 100 million. It is going to be very difficult to predict the scalability next 5-6 years. What provides vitality in our business? Why did we grow? Why did we do well? And I can write that down a little bit to kind of share with you. First of all, our vision is very clear. Connect the unconnected. And the vision we executed with very strong core values. In Cambium, every manager's evaluation when we do, end of the year, we actually evaluate against core values. Customer delight, innovation, respecting people, being part of the community we serve, developing our people. These are the core values of the company. Every engineer in the company has those core values at their desk. We promote based on core values. We evaluate based on that. So that has become the kind of five fabric of our company. Goodness drives us. So let me share with you an example. Last October, I think right after Vispa, uh, yeah, right after Vispa, Cambium completed five years uh, since emancipation. That's how Scott came up calls it, since emancipation. And we decided, well, should we give a big party? Let everybody have a uh, you know, good time. And you know, many people said, no, we will not do that. We will actually give 50 bicycles to a South Chicago school where the boys and girls from third grade to fifth grade have never seen a bicycle. So our engineers took a auditorium for a couple of days. They assembled the bikes, 25 for girls, 25 for boys. And I was lucky enough the next day on a semi-truck, we took all those 50 bicycles, we went to this uh, uh, South Chicago school, and I kid you not, kids were jumping with joy when they didn't know they were getting a bicycle. And some were crying. And that moment, we actually captured on a, you know, in a video on YouTube as well. Everyone felt so good. Those 50 bicycles were just so joyful that day for these two kids. So the principal came to me at the end of the day when the ceremony was over. He said, Atul, these bicycles you are giving to these kids, they are from families who have, they have never received a Christmas gift. And it was around Thanksgiving time. And this bicycle today might change the life of this kid on the right path. And that, you know, I still remember that sentence, that this bicycle today might change the life of this kid. So for Cambium, actually more than bits and bytes, and you want to hear lots of bits and bytes and gigahertz and megahertz, that gives me more joy. That gives me more satisfaction that Cambium is doing the right things. Very talented and humble global team. We tell our team, always be humble. Because those who are arrogant, at the end, you know, they, they, they create circumstances that they just do not deliver. So, for us, confidence is there, but not arrogance. We encourage risk taking in cabinet. In fact, many a times we don't succeed. But those who don't succeed within Cambium for taking a risk, we always tell them, don't worry, learn from it, move forward. So, as a result, the company will keep innovating. Global teamwork, an excellent part. We have 3,500 channel partners worldwide. Wars plus distributors worldwide. An excellent network, same values we, we convey to them. And global teamwork across the board in the company. We value that a lot because innovation comes from all quarters. 25 plus nationalities in Cambodia. And that makes us a strong global company because each person, whether they are from Africa, whether they are from China or India or from Brazil or Mexico, doesn't matter. They bring a good perspective. We learn about frequencies. We learn about, we learn about national priorities and that makes the company stronger. What is driving our growth? I think the need for speed, all of you serve so many customers you know. If somebody is getting 15 megabit, they want 25. If somebody is getting 25, they want 50. This will keep going for a
all very, very fast growing lines of campaign right now. 60% cumulative growth on all new products introduced since 14. So these new products are propelling, you know, filling our sales with the wind. Significant Wi-Fi growth opportunity and outstanding team ready to support. So as you look at your Wi-Fi alternatives, whether for enterprises or for homes, you know, Cambium should be a very, very key partner working with you. Strong financials and margins as a company. I could have said that five years back, but today, as we move from survive to strive to thrive, we have strong financial balance sheet as a company. And again, thanks to all your loyalty, advice, and support, we wouldn't have done without that. So, vision-wise, as I said, connecting and unconnected, the fabric we are building increasingly will create purpose-built resilient networks. And Scott will talk about, we are adopting new technologies and you will see our vision, our roadmap for the next 18 months. Emerging leader in fixed 5G with our 14 by 14 Medusa, that's the first technology. There are many new technologies we are working on and you'll see Cambium. Cambium will talk less but deliver. Because it's very easy to say those things but very difficult to deliver. So what you'll see us do is Medusa is our first product but there are an array of products coming through which will put, put us as a very much a leader in 5G. Zero touch. See and, see and Maestro's key push is going to be as you scale the networks with thousands of devices and those of you who are in industrial IoT you're going to drive millions of devices, sensors. We want to be scalable. And those who have designed software know the biggest challenge in network management is database scalability and resiliency. No single point of failure. Those are the things we have focused on. So Cambium, Cambium, CN, Maestro has six cloud points at different places. There's no, there's no single point of failure. There's a built-in resiliency. And then with the next two, three years, you'll also see us that CN Maestro will start to bring new technologies like machine learning, things like that as part of it. But we are not driven by the fad. We are not driven by the fashion. A lot of people are talking about AI. We are driven by what can it do? Can it do proactive support? Can it do proactive diagnostics? Can it do capacity planning? Those are the kind of things we'll, at the right point you will see us bring that. So, last slide, and now I'm going to hand over to Scott. So you see the innovation which we are driving forward. You are seeing the goodness which Cambium focuses on. And again, I'm very proud of everyone in the room that in your own way, you are bringing tremendous goodness. We are all totally wireless, and the future is bright. With that, I'm going to invite Scott Imhoff, our Senior Vice President of Product, uh, <laughs> Thank you for that tool. We, uh, we've taken a little bit of a different approach this year to share not just specific product updates that have occurred in the past year, and those are immediately out in the future, uh, but we're going to share some product vision with you. Uh, we're going to share with you a trajectory on new product lines. Uh, we're going to share with you an expansion of our business and the technology and the vertical market footprints. Uh, not all of it will apply to you, uh, but I am certain that there will be elements of this presentation and our product roadmaps that will apply to you. And I do appreciate your patience with us. I appreciate you spending uh, a couple hours with us to share. This is literally the only time we do this in North America is at this event. And at the end of my presentation, I'll share a roadmap slide with you that looks out through 2018 it aligns our product investment by vertical market and you'll better understand why that is. Before we dive in, uh, just a little quick uh, housekeeping for those folks in the back. There are lots of open seats. And, and I know you don't like to disrupt the speaker when they're up here, but please, point, there's two seats right here, three seats right here. Uh, I know Nathan would, wouldn't mind scooting over a little bit, but there's, there's three seats right here. There's one in the back, three over here, two over here. So please come in and make yourself comfortable. Uh, Get a, to see and hear what we're talking about, be comfortable as we do this. Second, Derek announced, that, and I, I'm not sure it was quite heard, um, we're having a reception immediately following this event, open bar, that's, that's AKA free, um, <laughs> lots of good food, 
uh, fellowship, sharing ideas peer to peer. I very much welcome you guys to come join us uh, for some camaraderie, to see our, our demonstrations. We've got lots of new technology to demonstrate, many of which I'm going to talk about. The part that, that I don't think you guys heard was we got some great door prizes, one of which was a thousand dollar purchase credit. And, and Derek, I, I don't think that quite got the, 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 the group energized enough. So, so we're going to make some changes. Right, so, so the first question I have for you, would you rather have two $1,000 purchase credits or one $2,000 purchase credit? So we're, we're, we're in Vegas, right? This is, this is odds, right? You increase your odds or you, or you go for the reward. So, so let me see a share of hands for $2,000 purchase credits. All right, who's in Vegas, baby? How about one $2,000? That's pretty close. <laughs> I don't know. Where's the tool? Is the tool in here? Two two thousand dollar purchase credits. Oh yeah. Is that, is that what I heard? Yeah. I think we can make that happen. Derek's got a little extra budget this year, so we're gonna Ray. Where's Ray? Ray, Ray, Ray. We're gonna give away two two thousand dollar purchase credits. Uh, at the event, you have to be present to win, preferably vertical, but you, you got to be present to win, all right? So, all right, that's good, this baby, I like it. All right, so be, be patient with me. Uh, we are going to take questions at the end of the session. Uh, so we got two mics, we'll run around, and we'll take questions as long as you want to take them. Uh, the whole team will be next door at the reception, and you can continue to ask us questions and drill into it. We take, we take feedback, good, bad, or different. We got thick skin, and we do incorporate, we listen, we do incorporate. So let's get started. So I'm going to build a little bit on a tool's vision because the balance of the presentation builds to this, to this slide. And if you think about Cambia's portfolio and where we operate around the world, we touch a lot of different verticals, we touch a lot of different applications, but there's a very common set of architectures, there's a very common set of technologies that, that, that provide the services that our partners and our network operators execute on. So you think about long distance, and you think about licensed microwave, FDD, six to 42 gig, you think about PTP, PTP 650, PTP 670, PTP 550, we're gonna talk about that one in a little bit. And then we build on that, and the, the majority of this room is deeply involved in this aspect, which is the distribution of that high capacity network to residential enterprise addresses. And we have two outstanding product lines that we continue to invest in and innovate there in the PMP 450 line and the EPMP line, and you're going to see some expansion of both of those lines in depth, and you might see an expansion of the options to provide point to multi point. Right? We've always been in the industrial space. I suspect many of you serve this industrial space, and for us, what is industrial? Large geographic area, multiple points of presence in the geographic area, and the need to move data. So it's electric utilities, it's water utilities, it's oil and gas, it's rail. We've always served that space. Last year, we expanded our product portfolio to include C and reach for narrowband radio. And that, that's, for most of the people in this room, that's like, wow, narrowband, 12 and a half kilohertz, right? We're, we're going the other direction, kilobits of data. But, but, it's all about reach. It's about reaching the edge of that network through foliage and underground vaults, in some cases, through 220 megahertz. It's about the link budget. It's not how much data you get, it's the <coughs> have a reliable connectivity. And we continue to expand and invest in that space. In 2018, you'll see us touch on more data gateways and the back-end network systems to support the cloud and the internet of things. Targeted at industrial, to be very clear. Okay? Edge access, CM pilot. Historically, our presence in the enterprise space was relatively light, building to building connectivity. The introduction of CM pilot and that 80211 access solution really pressed us into that enterprise space, that carpet space, to provide broadband access. And we've seen a lift on our service providers around the world that are extending their service to include managed service provider 802.11 Wi-Fi access. We've seen network operators use our E500, 501, and 502 to extend their service, their value proposition to the residential customers to outdoor access in their communities. They brought broadband to the playgrounds, they brought broadband to play, uh, the playing fields, they brought into the downtown areas, just as a value-added service. Right? We backed that with CM Maestro for cloud-based and on-premise network management for end-to-end visibility. We support that with our customer support, 24 
FISA online our form, right? There's multiple ways to touch Cambium for support. A different way of looking at this is left to right, high capacity to the edge. Very clean product portfolio that touches each layer of that network with CM Maestro across the top. Now, we get a little esoteric here for you, but I think it's important to understand what we think about when we think about our product investments and our strategy and how that influences where we're going. First and foremost, fixed wireless broadband, that, that's us. That's our foundation. That's where we came from. We're not leaving. Right? Everything we do is built on that foundation. Historically, 5 gigahertz, then from 3 gig, 2.4, 900 meg. Sakit uh, is introducing 6.4 for Russia on EPMP platforms. We continue to invest in that fixed point-to-point -point and point-to-multi-point portfolio. It is the foundation of what we do. Wi-Fi, you cannot ignore a $9 billion TAM. You cannot ignore the common technology footprint that we use in, in our CM pilot and our EPMP product lines. You can't ignore the service providers are extending their network from just not just access, but distribution of that access with the home and within the enterprise. And we're investing there, we're growing our business, and we think you can grow your business as well with Wi-Fi. And we're building capabilities within C and Maestro to enable you to act as a managed service provider and provide that as a sole service. IIoT, the tool really emphasized the importance of this. We see it impacting our business already, again in those primary the oil and gas and utility, water, rail, significant places, and it will only continue to grow and accelerate. Last week, we were in Athens, Greece, and, and, and i got to be honest, the, the view of the Mediterranean Sea out of my hotel room is much nicer than the interstate that I see today. But, but we were having very similar conversations, very similar trends, very similar inquiries about where we're going with our technologies, and it's centered around IIoT. Tremendous amount of interest in, 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 in desire to extend technologies to support IIT, and they, 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 the, the network operators can see the trajectory of their consumption of their capacity. Right? Across the top, we talk a lot about CM Maestro. We're going to introduce a, a platform called CN Archer. We have a vision of end-to-end -end design, deployment, commissioning, management, artificial intelligence, machine learning, applied across the top, the data transient across that network, that you can make more intelligent decisions based on that information. It's not just data, you gotta transform it into action and information. Spectrum is our natural resource. Our collective natural resource is spectrum. How efficiently we use that spectrum is to our benefit. To the degree that you're not able to exercise channel reads, to the degree that you're not able to maximize your spectral efficiency on a bit per second basis, to the degree that you're not able to take advantage of 5.1 and 5.2 here in North America, we need, we, Cambium, need to invest in spectrum and, and technologies that support that spectrum. And you see us really doubling down on that. If you go back when we left Motorola five years ago, six years ago, October 28th, Emancipation Day, we were pretty much a five gig house. We dabbled in three gig. We had 900 meg here in North America. Yes, we had 60 to 42. Uh, but today, what we're touching in terms of 28 gig, 60 gig, 80 gig, uh, you guys all probably saw WISPA's publications and the support at 3,700, 4,200, 59, 25. Those are future, right? By the time the FCC gets through that process, it's two, three, four years down the line. But we are preparing for maybe not both of those becoming available. Highly suspect that one of them will for this space. But from a technology standpoint, we have to invest there. Right. So the degree that you can help us better understand what spectrum you have access to, what requirements that you have, and you're not all from the U.S. and Canada, we actually have quite a few international guests here with us, the better off we can develop our product roadmaps around that, that spectral roadmap. But what I can tell you, what I can tell you is Cambium is far more involved in spectrum decisions at a national level, an international level, than they've ever been in the past. And you'll see us bring products forward, exercising those bands as they become. So, I also thought it important to share with you, every year we get together, the leadership team, and we think through, hey, what are the trends that are going to impact our business? Not, not necessarily within the 12-month time horizon, maybe not even within the 24-month time horizon, because an average development cycle is about 18 months. From the time that we have an idea to the time that we actually have a product rolling off of our factory, about 18 months on hardware, generally six to nine months on software features. So we 
of these appear every year. Some of them drop off, some of them rise. And I'm going to share some of them, what I think are more important to you. And I invite debate on these. Not, not right now. But, but when you guys buy me a beer next door, it's free. Uh, <laughs> I invite input, debate on these ideas. I want to hear your opinion. Right? Tell me we're wrong. Tell me, yeah, those were all great, but you haven't thought about X, Y, and Z. So first, global adoption of shared access spectrum. So there's an all-day event. Uh, Matt Mangrios and my team participated today. And certainly the FCC and the CBRS, who we all wished it was here sooner, faster, right? We, we wanted it yesterday. We wanted clarity on the priority access licenses. We want to move forward with it, right? It's going to happen. I mean, I have an exact life want, but it's going to happen. What I can tell you, though, is every regulatory body around the world is watching what the FCC is doing. The FCC is out front on this aspect of spectrum management, and they're setting the stage. So it's going to happen, and it's going to be adopted on a worldwide basis. That's my fervent belief, and that's the belief that Canyon has in that technology. Funny enough, before this event kicked off here about 5.30, uh, an individual walked up to me and said, hey, what, what do you think about license-assisted access versus LTU, unlicensed LTE. And I smiled to myself because I said, we've already made this bet. We're betting on license-assisted access. We believe LTEU will fade off in the dominant technology in the LTE space and the exercise in the licensed and unlicensed spectrum will be license-assisted access. We as a technology provider need to prepare for that. We need to be able to make that technology available to you or for 60 gig SOCs. So 60 gigahertz is not new. Spectrum has been available for a long time. There's been tremendous innovation that's taken place driven principally out of the defense space. So they love things that don't propagate very far, very hard to intercept, short propagation spectrum, high capacity. The challenge was, like all things associated with the defense market, really expensive. Uh, but we've seen the emergence of commercial SOCs come forward, and we believe the time has come for a cost-effective CPE, focused really on the CPE. That will allow your business case to work in the delivery of gigabit capacity to residential enterprise addresses in urban environments. Maybe suburban. And you're going to go visit the And you'll, you'll see me talk a little bit about what we're doing in that space and how it's going to impact your 28 business plans. Video delivery. So, probably three years ago, maybe four years ago, we started an engagement with an operator in Serbia who was probably doing the most innovative video delivery across a wireless network that we had ever seen. At the time that they were using a competitor's product, and it wasn't working very well, they were having challenges with uh, CPE counts on an AD. could be quite past 20, falling over. And they weren't using their, their natural resource efficiently. They made a shift, and we've been with them since that point in time. And I can say they still lead of all the network operators I've engaged with using their fixed broadband access network as a delivery mechanism for high definition video on demand. We see a transition taking place where it's gone from a science experiment to a modest adoption on a, on a, on a global basis. And we see that accelerating. Well, how does, what, what's, what's, why do we have to think about that? Because there's certain investments that you have to make in the air interface that allows more efficient delivery of video, that, that better optimizes latency and jitter in order to really do that on a consistent basis without having to over engineer the system. We think that this is an important advancement. Um, I'm going to talk a lot about IIoT, and, and I mentioned earlier GLORA, if you're not familiar with that, that that's an unlicensed uh, pseudo standard. It's not recognized by standard body yet, but it's progressing towards that. My, my belief, Camden's belief, is that really two standards will emerge uh, GLORA, uh, low power wide area. And uh, LTE, narrow band or MB LTE, a lot of other mechanisms to use that for machine to machine applications. So th th those two will be the dominant providers, and we want to participate on both sides of that equation. Okay. Network security, uh, Equifax, that's always something good to hear about, right? Uh, but but, but th th this is so important to us. We're at the edge, right? We were at the entry port to malicious attacks. So, you know, back in the day, you talked about AES and encrypting the, the transport, and everybody's happy. Yeah, that's not quite the same. So, so we're investing in Dimitri versus Dimitri. Dimitri in here. He stepped up. All right. So, so we're investing heavily in white hat hacking. Uh, we're, we're investing in bug bounty programs. We're investing in technologies to help secure our networks and, in, in, in effect, secure your networks. And I think that that will be ever more important 
in this space. Artificial intelligence machine learning. So wouldn't it be cool if CN Maestro could tell you, hey, that AP you've got at the edge of your network, based on your historic capacity, you can, you can add three more subscriber modules on that AP without doing anything else to your network. Wouldn't it be cool if, if you got a text to that effect? Wouldn't it be cooler if it said, hey, and if you increase the capacity of the third leg of your backhaul, you could add 10. And that's a very simple example. But today, there's a lot of manual network engineering that goes into that. But with machine learning or artificial intelligence, the network should be able to tell you that and tell you that very efficiently and quickly. Again, very simple example. But there's massive amounts of data. You don't even know what's in those data packets. But if we're able to better analyze the traffic across your network, we can provide better guidance to you on how to build your network and how to build subscriber device counts, drive our code, drive return on investment. So, a, a tool uh, highlighting this, this is, we're just really proud of this. We, we've shipped 7 million devices. And what's even cooler than that that you can't really see uh, is the acceleration of our counts. EPMP, for example, is, is up over 1.3 million thus far, and it was introduced in uh, keep it with 2012, right? Uh, 2013, right? 7 million. Of those, <coughs> we ship over a million PNP 450 subscribers. And every year I tell a tool about this time as we're talking about our financial plan for the forthcoming year, it's going to slow down. And every year, Maddox sees his number. So he's no more sandbag. But, but 450 continues to accelerate on a worldwide basis. And, and I think it's a testament to the robustness of that platform. Technologies like CM Medusa that extend its life. Okay. Speaking of CM Medusa, this time last year, Mark was telling me he had just received his first three units. Right? We just started shipping September 23rd, I think we shipped our first CM Medusa. We've now deployed, we know that there's deployments over 3,000 devices around the world. We've got CM Medusa, PMP 450M deployed on every continent. And again, continue to accelerate in its proof points. The technology like massive multi-user mind mount provide value to our network operators and allow them to extend their networks. Thought I'd just, for historical sake, share, share some pictures with you. So the, this is, where's the, uh, I saw Anthony in here. Where's Anthony? There he is in the back room. So Anthony was uh, the, the lead engineer. Uh, our chief scientist was, was, was the scary bright guy, uh, Peter Strong. That, that originated this idea of the mass multi-user micro. But these are pictures from the early days of the lab. Uh, and this was indoor, about what it looked like. And then we thought we'd take it out. Right? <laughs> Whoever was doing the cable install of the weatherproof, you had a full-time job a couple weeks. Okay? But, but the results are there. And we consistently see in our network operators, when they unplug a 450 or a 450i, they get three to four times the performance. And if you look at the delta from the top table to the bottom table, what you notice is it performs better the heavier it's loaded. That's pretty cool. The more you demand, the more it gets. So this is the chart that I showed last year. So if you go back a couple slides, all those cables, you know, that's what it looks like today. That's innovation. There's not another manufacturer in telecom today, Nokia, ZTE, Huawei, that's got commercial deployments of eight by with 3,000 sectors deployed. 40 megahertz channel on the horizon, demonstrated to deliver 1.2 gigabits. The hardware was built to sustain software development over an extended period of time. It continued to deliver value. <laughs> We talked about CBRS uh, earlier, and, and Cambium is fully committed to this. I think most of you were probably in some portion of these sessions that took place today. I don't need to reinvent this chart. GAA, pretty solid. There was a recent intent published by the FCC uh, to reevaluate how they're going to allocate PALS, priority access licenses. I would encourage you to support WISPA and their endeavors to advocate on your behalf. And if you're not paying attention to what WISPA is doing there, very much need to do so. You very much need to get on board 
and support WISPA's initiatives to protect the power licenses. Right? From a product standpoint, we are ready to go. So when you look at our 3 gig 450i uh, install base, new products, from a hardware standpoint, we are good to go. Uh, we have been under development for quite some time on SaaS, uh, working with SaaS providers to prove out our implementation of technologies. We just need the FCC to pull the trigger, and we'll be there for you. You should have confidence in what we're doing at 3 gig. We talked about 450M in the 3 gig band last year. Uh, and we have advanced development, not quite at the pace that we would have liked. Uh, it turns out it's a little bit harder to go down band than it is to go up band. Uh, but but uh, Anthony is diligently working away at 3 gig 450M. Now we did make a change, and I want to be very transparent here. We um, we shifted to 8x8. So I just talked about how great 14x14 14 14 was, and now, now you're backing off on this guy. What's going on? Well, truthfully, scale, size. This geometry is about the same size as the 5 gig, and if we would have gone 14 by 14, it would have gotten substantially larger. Geographically larger and heavier in weight. And we didn't think that that was going to float the boat. In fact, it might have sunk. Alright, so, so we backed off 8 by 8, so we won't get quite as good a performance improvement here, but it will be a substantial performance improvement over the existing 3 gig 450i, and we're in line shipments in Q3 with solid beta test in Q2. We just announced uh, a new subscriber module, CPE, for the 450 platform. This is the 450B mid <coughs> game, this little guy right up here. It started shipping in September. I would imagine uh, that the distributors you can talk to that are visiting might be able to comment on product availability from them. Uh, <coughs> volume now. Uh, what I would highlight there is the 16 dBi integrated thin film technology that we, we carried forward from the Force 180 on the EPMP platform. Um, in January, we will introduce the integrated 25 dBi high gain. Very clean solution. A couple things I'll point out. Actually, we're Seth. We're Seth. Seth, raise your hand. Very loud and proud. So one of the investments that we made is for the first time in our history, we actually have a, a staff member devoted to industrial design. Actually, we have two, Ashish and Seth, uh, influencing our mechanical design from two perspectives, aesthetics, but actually the human interface, both on our applications, but also the human interface and touch with the physical design. And you'll start to see far more attractive design on our products than you've probably seen in the past. And when I show you the new EPMP third generation here in a few slides, it'll really kind of touch itself. All right? So, building great art. Significant investment in hardware, an equally significant investment taking place on software. I'm not going to drill through this in detail. What I would point out is over the next two releases, we're really investing in features that drive service level agreement, SLAs, QoS. So a complete revamp of our QoS capabilities and ability to manage service flows across our network. And I think that this is really a reflection of the intelligence that your networks are now being managed to and the expectations that your end customers have. This slide, uh, Matt owns it and works with Rajesh as our software lead. And I'd really encourage you to spend a bit of time next door talking to Matt about the features that are on this and the prioritization of those features. This is where we probably use the greatest amount of assistance and input to our R&D dollars. Okay. So, Changing horses here, getting on the EPNP horse for a bit. We introduced EPNP with, 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 with some pretty specific value propositions in mind. First of all, when we looked at frequency, when we looked at spectral efficiency, and we knew that thinking about our, our uh, natural resource, spectral efficiency was huge. Just about anywhere in the world, you can see this, right? This doesn't work very well. 
you, you need to be able to support higher CPE accounts driven by exercising your asset investment in the access point, but also optimizing your spend and operating expense associated with the site right? We want it to look like that. And I can give you an endless list of sites that went from that to that. And then we built on top of it, we, excuse me, I'm just all off to the right, uh, really application-specific capabilities, optimizing the network for CCTV, optimizing the network for IPTV, optimizing the network for voice traffic to make it easy to deploy and provide value-added services behind that. So where do we go from here? We introduced the Force 190. That began shipping in late Q2. Uh, actually, in North America, it was early Q3. But this is in market, in volume. We got our FCC license on August 30th and released shortly thereafter. So we now have a nice collection of three CPEs associated with the EPV 1000 line. We have the Force 180 at 16 dBi. We just introduced the Force 190 at 22 dBi. And you have the Force 200 at 25 dBi. <clears throat> And this pretty much sets our EPP 1000 slash 2000 CPE portfolio. <laughs> Elevate. Who here has elevated a network? Steam. Right. Who here has not but is thinking about it? All right. <clears throat> Next door. Those that are thinking about it, don't talk about it. Why is somebody that's not? Finds one of those people that raise their hand the first time and say, Hey, tell me about your experience elevating your network. Did it work? I'm very confident of the response that you're going to get. The opportunity to simply replace an access point, upgrade the remote CPEs over the air, you don't have to touch them, leave them in place, exercise that capital investment, preserve that operating expense, and elevate that network. And you will receive proof positive of the impact. Frequency reuse, packet processing, more than 20 CPEs per AP on your network. Right. Today, we support one particular manufacturer's platforms. You'll see demonstrations next door of another manufacturer's platform. Right. I'll leave it at that. You guys can see. <laughs> All right. So, we talked last year. You guys wanted to know, hey, where's your 802.11ac Wave 2 platform? Actually, you did say that. You said, hey, where's your 802.11ac? Platform. And we said, time out, guys. We've looked at wave one, not a wise decision. We've looked at the early chipsets for wave two, not a wise decision. Really? It's, it's a key led that analysis and support that decision making. And we took our loss tactically to make the right decision. And we've made the right decision. We're launching an 8211AC wave two based platform, EPP 3000, based on the correct chipset that will deliver value to you as a network operator. First implementation of that, we'll ship this quarter. That's EPMP Force 300 25 dpi. Now your first question is, is where's the AP? Save a slide. Alright. So we started with the AP this SM, subscriber module CPE, really to make sure we got things right. It's a little easier to develop a CPE that can be used in a point-to-point -point mode to get things started and then follow up with the AAP. But the, this device, initially deployed in a point-to-point -point mode, will also be the high-gain CPE for that EPMP 3000 platform. And I'm sure you guys can all read, but just to point out, 500 megabit is on the rate in the 80 megahertz channel. Uh, we'll, we'll carry some free. Right. So, Let's talk about the center point of the technology, the EPMP 3000 AP. This will launch at Q2 of 2018. It will support the same breadth of spectrum, 5150 to 5950. It will support 4x4 multi-user mining. Right? So not quite the 14x14 to 450M, but not quite the straight price either. Right? So this is a very strong performance for a very reasonable strike price for solid value performance on this platform. It will carry forward all of the cool things that we developed to minimize self-interference. It will carry forward all the cool things that we developed to support VoIP, to support IPTV, to support CCTV transport on this.
install base I just talked about, pulling forward those EPMP 1000, Force 180, Force 190, Force 100, and all those devices that we just elevated, and see a maestro across the top with a little bit of peace of mind. We'll follow up with what would be, I think, the volume CPE on this platform in the same time frame. So this is the Force 316. So it takes the same form factor as the EPMP Force 180 with the 16 EBI integrated uh, thin film and thin technology uh, platform. Change the horses again. Go well versus small race. So we talked uh, last year about the PTP 650. Um, one of the, we also have the PTP 700, which is targeted at our defense market. We introduced a, a technology called high packing multi where you basically set up dedicated uh, carriers to up to eight CPUs, <laughs> and you would benefit from RF performance of PTP 650 on point to point, but be able to distribute that capacity with confidence to the eight CPUs. It's really only available on the defense platform. Which is a relatively expensive platform for all the reasons that the military dictates. But we have quite a bit of interest in extending that to our commercial applications. We've done that with the 670. So we've carried forward with the 650, we upgraded the processor, added some memory, did a few other tweaks along the way, and kind of forward with the 670. Fully backwards compatible with the 650. So if you have a 650 link out there, you take a lightning hit, tornado, whatever it might be, you can replace that node with the 670 and it will connect directly. That 650 and operate for To be clear, the 650 cannot support the software upgrade to enable high capacity multi point or any other future features that require that processing capacity, but you're definitely protected from backwards compatibility. I'm going to skip forward to in the interest of time. So, you also guys also asked, hey, what are you doing about this Air Fiber 5X? What are you doing about this Mimosa B5? You guys are on the sidelines, get the fight. Very much a similar decision making process from us. We couldn't get in the fight with the platforms that we had, and we didn't think the right chipsets were commercially available to really have a sustainable advantage in this space. We're doing this with the PTP 550. <coughs> Shipping this year, November 2017. The coolest part of this platform, and I just love saying it. Non adjacent asymmetric channel aggregation. That's how cool. Non adjacent asymmetric channel aggregation. And that will allow us those headline data rates north of 1 gigabit, but more importantly, significant practical data rate at a very reasonable strike price. Right? Now, strike price is important. Right? Pretty attractive. Eh? And really credit, and you, you will see, uh, there's the two gentlemen that have demonstrations. So they're, they're over there, they're getting ready for the demonstrations. So come next door, see what we're doing. Very, very happy with this platform. It'll be worth the wait. We talked about seeing pilot. When we showed this slide last year, I'm not going to look back at the deck, I was almost embarrassed. We had like three little subscriber modules up there, right, or APs. We, we had the E400. Uh, we had uh, a E500 is coming, and we had an EPMP 1000 hotspot. In the space of 12 months, we have gone from adolescence to a university student with this product. We have gone from 802.11n to 802.11ac wave 2. And we continue to expand this product portfolio, uh, both on the outdoor lines with E500, E501, and E502. And just real quick, the 501 is 90 to 120 degrees second. The 502 is a 30 degree second. So the combination of those three platforms will allow you to cover just about any outdoor footprint in any outdoor uh, concentration of users. So you might cover 360 degrees with E500, with the Tommy Correctional Antenna Technology, developed by Canyon Network Center of Excellence in Antenna Design. Or you might say, hey, this has got a high density deployment, I'm going to use a cluster of 30 degree sectors to provide that 360 degrees of coverage. We complemented that with a very robust and agile controller architecture. Okay, so 
clearly, our view is cloud is the way to go. And we'll take care of all the infrastructure problems. We'll take care of all the hardware upgrades. We'll take care of the security. We'll take care of the HA. We'll take care of da 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 da. But if that's not for you, you can certainly deploy that on premise. And there are certain situations, geographies, preferences that require it. But we also recognize that all, not, all networks aren't necessarily needing that level of complexity, that level of functionality. I've got a small hotel, I've got three APs, I'm good to go. Right? So, autopilot, beautiful solution. Nominated hardware controller from an AP. So, you can nominate one of your APs, you nominate it as a controller, and it can control the 32 APs in its network. If for some reason it goes away, the second nominated AP takes over. And you can use any combination of these three. Maximum agility and flexibility and control functionality to support that growing portfolio of access points. Uh, can't possibly go into all the feature development that takes place on this platform, but suffice it to say that we, we align investment in software feature functionality to the vertical markets and applications that we're serving. You can't show up at a venue like this with a fantastic AP that doesn't support the hospitality feature set that's required. You have to align. There's no difference than for providers or suppliers. Speaking of hospitality, one of the platforms that we'll be introducing in December of this year is the 430. So this is our first wall play that targets the hospitality market for in-room distribution, as well as dormitories for university uh, campuses. Right? Very, very advanced platform. Beautiful it may see wave two. Uh, supports four wired LAN ports. So if you're going to connect your smart TV wired versus wireless, you've got a telephony system that you're going to cable in, whatever it might be, uh, this platform can support. Okay. I mentioned earlier managed service provider. Get just another interact here. Who, who here acts as a managed service provider for Wi Fi? The rest of you, you guys got to really think about this. This is one of the fastest growing spaces for service providers. Is to, to be not a service provider to bring broadband to the residential address or the enterprise address, but manage the distribution of that internet access within the building. And it is well within your skill set. It is well within your tech skill sets, and it extends your value proposition one step further. So again, make sure that pulse is the most. We are developing uh, within CN Maestro the toolkit to allow you to do this more efficiently and more effectively to support multi-tenancy. So within one screen, you can see the status of all the networks that you're managing, and then you can drill in to a specific network. You can manage onboarding. You can manage the configuration of APs discreetly within a client. It allows you to sit back and act as a management service provider from a distance and manage multiple clients in a very, very efficient fashion. And where's the Where is your name? This is the guy you want to talk to. If you have interest in being a managed service provider, you want to see what we're doing to see in Maestro to support that capability, and track out to me and have a conversation with them. All right. I'm going to skip forward here in the interest of time. Now, 80211 is, is just a rocking standard. There's constant innovation. Right? We went from in the AC wave one, to AC wave two, in the space of about 24 months. And guess what? AX is on the media horizon. But before we get there, we have a little bit of work to do. We're building a Ferrari. <coughs> so we can certainly compete with the run rate guys today. Right? You, you want to put us up against Rockets? You want to put us up against Aruba? Let's go. But we, we, we want to be in the race. We're building a Ferrari. That'll be the E640. This will support 4x4 in both 2.4 and 5 gig. It'll be able to support <coughs> doubling of the uh, APs in an autopilot configuration. It supports BLE for position. <coughs> Combination of 410, which is 2x2, two two, 600, 4x4, four four, and 640 dual band, 4x4, four four, will allow you to address any Wi Fi application. And then layer on top of that the E500 series for outdoor access using point to multi point or point to point to back call that with managed service provider capability on top of it. You have a complete solution to that space. 
I mentioned A to 11AX. I mentioned that it takes 18 months to do a uh, hardware development exercise. This will be our next generation. You'll see us introduce the AX based platforms late 2018, early 2019 timeframe. I share this with you just to share with you we're committed to this Wi Fi space. We're in it for a long haul. We're investing in long term development. We're following the SOCs. You can also, not help you, put the two points together. It's a machine. You're using that data tool and SOCs on your EPMD platform, probably logical that will follow this thread. Right. 60 gigahertz. Let's put a cheer up. Really happy to hear that. So, 60 gigahertz is something that we've been following for quite some time. And again, we've been following it because A, we, we know that there's a market for wireless delivery of gigabit, so the 100 megabit, gigabit capacity in urban environments. Who doesn't want to go kick the shit out of Comcast, right? Yeah. That's what we want to do. We want to take that and back. And you can't do it until you can reliably deliver 100 megabits per second. And then we know the trajectory of capacity demands, whether they actually use it or not, it's all on our feet, right? Millimeter wave radio is going to allow us to get there. And our first four way into this is 60 gigahertz. And we, the SOCs are allowing us to get the CPE strike prices down to the point that your business faces the world. We need CPEs that are strike price comparable somewhere between EPMP and 450. That's where we think we need to be. So we will introduce a 60 gig platform. We'll start shipping this in the second half, probably late second half of 2018. We will support point to point, point to multi point, store for configuration. <coughs> we believe that we can differentiate from the parties that are in this space. So, sick credit where credit is due, they, they are the 800 pound growth. If you can't do better than them, then don't bother. Right? We think we have an approach to do better. We think we can provide a true point to multi point solution in a very comparable strike price deliver differentiated services to you guys. I touched on standards a little bit. I touched on spectrum. We talked about the types of system access. We've been asked for quite some time. Can you guys in or out to help you? And we have always been a proprietary solution. And you saw the investments of all the slides that I just shared with you about our ongoing commitment to proprietary development. But there is a certain segment of our market around the world that demands a standards-based solution. And there are certainly pros and cons in the world. So, we've got the capability to tackle it. We've got the global footprint and the distribution standpoint. And we've got the customer base that's asking us to just bring it in the game. So, why, why are we interested in LTE? We, we did a fair bit of market research on this. We visited a lot of customers around the world that were using existing LTE solutions. We've been very active uh, in industry uh, trade shows around this space just to, to learn, can we actually do something different than what people are doing today in this space? First of all, we really understanding what's the options. And what we found is the smaller list, what really attracted them to, to LTE was the fact that they could get high PIRP, they could get better range. They, they didn't have to put up as many power sites to reach the population that they were targeting. That's what was the most attractive to them, those smaller ones. Second, the medium sized risk, they, they were already providing coverage. They were already going to that cell architecture, breaking down the network, smaller cell sites, higher concentration of users. What was most attractive to them was CPU strike for us. Fair is fair. 450 is the FEGA based solution. Because it's an FEGA based solution, we can do some pretty cool stuff with that. And we can do it pretty quick. And we're committed to do it do that. But it drives a strike price on CPE from a cost standpoint. And that's just reality. With tens of millions, hundreds of millions of LTE devices being manufactured, this is a cheap results in a very low cost CPE. Get a little bit of the confines and standard. But you get a very low cost. When you look at the larger operator in the world, and this is particularly the tier one, tier two, tier three operators, what they're really looking for is investment protection. And what they're really looking for in investment protection is the ability to multi source. That they're not um, committed to a single manufacturer. And if you look at them around the world, most of them have two manufacturers in their network. 
They have two infrastructure providers, and they have multiple CPT providers. Okay. They're looking for investment protection in the form of the doctors. Those are the three things that we keep on. There's a long list of maps that's time here. We, we, we welcome additional feedback and feedback on these thoughts. Help us build the best product that's out there. So, the question was, well, why not use these existing solutions? Right? There's a lot of providers of LTE technology out there today. Again, what are we going to do this different? It's just are too complex. Even the hidden PC is too complex. Even though you say it's not there, it's a little Complex, difficult to manage. SIM cards, right? CPEs that were not designed for long term outdoor deployment in varying weather conditions. Challenging, right? Costly. Not so much for the CPE, cheap CPEs. APs, modestly expensive. But managing that as a whole becomes complex and expensive. Not fixed service wire front. So this should not be a shock in any way. 3GPP doesn't give a hoot about fixed deployment. They're talking about it a little bit more now, in particular around LA data. That's not what the standard is about. Let there be no mistake. It is a mobile technology. Okay? They're, not, they're not really concerned with their work for you as a flat layer to the platform. Right? So, how do we differentiate? I can't share all the secret sauce with you today. So, what can we do? Where can we find an opportunity to change? Well, we can take it out of the We can truly eliminate the EBC. I'll give you a proof point. So, this is not our first foray into a standard. We deployed the 320 platform based on the 216E. Right? And think, well, what did we do with that for those of you that deployed it, those of you that did why not just assess this? Because we made a flat layer to we eliminated the expensive back off. We have been there and done that. Right? We want to be able to exploit the LTE area interface. There is lots to be said on the positive side, excuse me, for that area interface that we can build on top of. We want to take advantage of the high power PAs and deliver that EIRP to a smaller and size list we are looking for. What we can then do is layer on top of that the secret sauce that we brought forward primarily out of the PMP 4 cloud. We can make an LTE solution targeted exclusively at the fixed operator, expressly for the fixed operator. So, <laughs> roughly a year from today, we'll be talking about the first deployment of the CN range. We're talking about in 2.5 years, lots of bands will fall, but we'll launch at 2.5. And we hope to be here this time next year talking with a few of you about your experiences in deploying scene arrangement as a bespoke layer two fixed LTE model. Now, I want to emphasize this in a degree. We have PMP 450. Next year we'll have EP450, EPMG, and CN Ranger. The year after that, we're going to have EP450, EPMG, and CN Ranger. So on and so forth. There are absolute things that we can do on a proprietary platform that we will not be able to do with LTE. There are things that we're going to do with LTE that we can't do with our EMP or EPMG platforms. So this is a horses for horses. In today's delivery of maps. You've got mutters, you've got turf horses. Right? You got dry track runners. Mm. We're putting more tools here in the box. We're not getting rid of any tools. We'll manage all of these platforms to see in my show. And as I said, we want to move. I know you guys want that here. <laughs> we want to move beyond managing that network after you deploy it. Right? We want to be able to assist you with the design. We want to be able to assist you with the model. Before you build it, before you put that bond together and commit that purchase for it, we want to assist you in the commissioning of that network. And that's where CN Archer comes into play. The commission of that network. 
have the confidence in the deployment and build out of that network in the most efficient fashion possible. <laughs> a handheld device for the tax center that interface the back office, that can handle configuration, that can handle orientation, that can handle inventory management, that can handle uh, assessing configuration of that radio. We are demonstrating this next work. And we will be watching it. It's in beta now. We'll be making this application available now. When is the target? Yeah. When is the target go out? Now, apologize to all your Apple users. <laughs> or the Android users. You can go online right now, Google Play, download this application and a demonstration. What I would love you guys to do is to do just that. <coughs> Start playing. <coughs> Start feeding us things that need to change, enhancements, defects that you find. Be part of the process. So you go to Google Play right now, download the demonstration version. There's a whole database behind it. You can exercise it, see the demonstration next door, and uh, come off the right. What's the APMP coming out for this? Uh, what is EPMP? <laughs> Q1. Q1? It's in the second one. It's EPMP and CMP are the second one. <laughs> I just didn't say, I know this question is coming. So, uh, do we have a, a date uh, on iOS? Q1. Q1. <coughs> so what this is going to look like at the end, as I said, we're not here today. We're not here tomorrow with this. Next year, we'll be, this time, we'll still be talking about this chart. So this is more of a, a vision from us on what we want to see in life. Right? So, uh, I'm not going to oversell it. You know, it doesn't do everything that, that we want it to do today. It won't do everything we want it to do tomorrow. But we, we have a vision of CM Maestro being able to provide that end to end life cycle of the country. Little advertisement, I'm almost done. Those of you that have not been to our community forum, please come visit the community forum, participate. All my product managers, Virtually all of our engineers are on Opportunity Forum. It's uh, professionally moderated, the staff moderates it. Uh, it is professional, it's focused, there's no overhead. It's all about the technology in the industry. Right. Don't participate. This is the slide that I talked about earlier. So, this is our 18 month roadmap. Never shown this before, I'm all proud of the size. Right. There's a lot of stuff going on, and this isn't all.